I'm Lauren Chigaris, partner and instructor here at Blue Hour Photo Ventures, and I'm here to talk to you today about how to edit your RAW files. First things first, what is a RAW file? RAW images can be produced by all DSLR and most point and shoot cameras. Now this is a much larger file type because it saves all of the information in the photo instead of compressing it like a JPEG would. You can easily set your camera to do this, but make sure you have multiple memory cards on hand because these files take up a lot more space than JPEGs. The advantage of shooting in RAW is that you have a lot more leeway when editing later on. This is especially crucial when you have a really important image that you need to salvage, or if you would like to repeatedly edit an image without it losing its quality. Once you've captured your images in RAW format, you can then edit them in Photoshop Creative Cloud, which is the preferred software that both my business partner Paul and I use for all of our editing needs. So here I have Adobe Bridge open and I'm browsing through my shots from our latest workshop. This is a really great way to organize your photos. I double click the image that I want and it opens up in Camera Raw, which is a free extension of Photoshop. Now check your histogram up here in the right corner. If the shadows and the highlights are distributed evenly, then you have the correct exposure. Many times though, the blacks here on the left or the whites on the right will be clipped, meaning that there will be a spike and it goes off the graph. In this photo, we see the whole photo is underexposed, so we drag the exposure bar up. And we can do this for up to two stops. Now the sky looks good, but the shadows are still underexposed, so we're going to adjust the shadows individually. So we drag that shadow bar up. Now I'll add a little bit of contrast to make the shapes pop. I like the whites where they are, but I want the blacks to be darker, so I drag the blacks up. Now I'm all about abstracting nature in my photos, so I find that playing around with the contrast really helps to define the figures. I actually find this image to be a little more blue than what I had remembered it being in real life, so I'll check the white balance. I want to add some yellow into this photo, so I change the white balance to shade. I can still make it more or less yellow by dragging the temperature up or down. Now I really want to emphasize how blue this sky was that day, so I'll go into the HSL grayscale bar and saturate the blues. I can also change the luminance and make the sky a bit of a darker blue. Since I shot this photo with the 12 to 24 wide angle, I'll go to Lens Corrections and click Enable Lens Profile Corrections. Wide angle lenses often get a little bit stretched on the sides. When I click this box, you see what a difference it makes. Even though I just made all these edits, no image quality was sacrificed in the process, which is definitely the beauty of RAW. This is great in case I plan to make a large print of this photo in the future, for example. These edits are automatically saved to a sidecar file with the file extension .xmp. So when you open this RAW file again, the adjustments will still be there. However, you can still make all the adjustments you want in the future, in this way, raw files are kind of like negatives from the old film days. So there you have it, raw files in a nutshell. I hope this tutorial took the mystery out of raw files and you're now more comfortable working with this very flexible file format. Look out for our other tutorials on topics such as resizing and saving images, using adjustment layers, and masking in Photoshop. For a true hands-on outdoor learning adventure, consider joining Paul and I in one of our travel workshops to exciting nature destinations across the country. I'm Lauren Chigaris of Blue Hour Photo Ventures. Thanks so much for watching.